All right, you guys, today is the Q&A and giveaway that I promised you all um, for hitting 3,000 subscribers. Now, I know I'm a little late on celebrating that milestone, but uh, it's been a juggle trying to get settled in. As you can see, the homeschool room is still a mess. I have my books upon books upon books. <laughs> but I wanted to thank you guys for supporting this channel and showing up weekly to watch my videos and all of the wonderful support that you guys have given me over the last couple of years so to kick off um, there is going to be a $20 giveaway at the end of the video so stay tuned um, I'm going to be answering your questions that I got from both YouTube and Instagram so um, to start the first question is did you always know you wanted to homeschool and the answer to that is no <laughs> I did not um, I do always say though that I wish I had been smarter, faster, and that I wish I had homeschooled from the very beginning. Uh, I have five kids. My oldest is 20. I have a 10 year old, seven year old, three year old, and five month old for those of you who are new here. And my oldest, my 20 year old, had gone to public school basically until her first semester in her senior year. And my 10 year old, we ended up pulling him his first grade year he was having a lot of issues in school with bullies and the the school blaming him and giving him consequences for getting bullied and then just so much homework and it was just turning into such a dislike of learning and I was just watching his bright little light kind of just go out and um, I talk more about it in a video I'll post up here if you guys are interested and haven't seen that one yet but I literally remember being in the pickup line one day waiting for him and the subject of homeschooling got brought up with the moms and I was that cliche, oh, I don't think I could ever do that. I don't have the patience. <laughs> and so it's so funny looking back on now, like, man, the Lord really works on hearts over the years. <laughs> because um, he had a wonderful teacher for preschool and kindergarten. And um, we changed schools and that school was a mess. And that's what led us to homeschooling. And I'm so thankful God put us in that school because I have loved homeschooling. So the next question is, what are your favorite ways to keep littles busy while big kids do school? So some of, I mean, I think nap time one, right? Like when your toddler or your little ones are sleeping, it's probably one of the best and most productive times to get schoolwork done with the big kids. We have also... I'm trying to scan for it. I don't see it. Um, we have also bought those like $20 sensory bins from Michaels. I love those things. They have they have sand, so that's the only bad thing, is especially depending on the type of flooring you have, you're gonna have to vacuum most likely when you're they're done using it. So they have a ton of different boxes, but um a few that I have purchased have like sand and dinosaurs or construction and trucks, and he loves those and that is something that will keep his attention for quite a while while we homeschool. Um, I have also relied on movies in the past. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm not proud <laughs> of it, but it has allowed us space to get things done instead of just me being stressed trying to juggle everybody. We are, however, going to be transitioning completely away from movies this coming year because we have decided not to put our TV up, which I'm really excited about, and just kind of focus on spending more time as a family and reading and doing art projects and hands-on things, going outside and things like that. So I am going to have to get more creative this year. I'm going to go pick up some more of those sensory boxes, I think. Ah, here it is, it was just under a pile of stuff. I'll show you guys real quick. So <laughs> it's, the box of sand. It's not kinetic sand either. Um, at least I don't, no, it's not. It's just regular sand. And then, so it has like little shovels. Um, it comes with dinosaurs. It depends on what you've done. I'm pretty sure he's mixed some stuff up, but here's an idea of what like the front looks like. So that one I think was construction and you get some little like sand rollers. And then this one was dinosaurs and like eggs and magnifying glasses. He kind of ended up combining them over the year. So I just Put them inside of each other but they have a whole bunch of different types so i'm going to get some more of those for him um i'm going to do some finger painting i have a lot of preschool items that he can 
work on but I think one of the main things I'm going to probably be utilizing the most is nap time and I don't know we're going to juggle this year and kind of just find our groove homeschooling with him actually truly involved instead of just kind of around if you guys have any tips those of you who have older kids who have already been through all of the preschool years and you have like a juggling system <laughs> down let us know down below any tips and tricks that you have for homeschooling with littles i would love to hear it the next question is how is your family settling in thank you for asking we are settling in really great uh, I was actually very when we got here I was very stressed like what are we doing did we make this huge mistake and it's funny because the housing community that is right across from ours you know how they're all like named different things it had the name of the baby that we lost we decided to name her um, just to help with closure and then you know we have something to call her when we're talking about her um so it was kind of like god saying like this is the right <laughs> this is the right path and i'm sorry i'm getting all ugly teary eyed um <laughs> it was like god was just saying that you know this is the right move and and you kind of get to in a way see her every day or see her name and just kind of be reminded of her more frequently but by God's grace, I mean, we're getting settled in and it looks like a mess, <laughs> but we are slowly but surely unpacking. So the next question is, your oldest has already graduated. Did you homeschool him? If so, how did the middle school, high school years go for you? So my oldest son is 10, but I, my oldest child is 20. And um, I did not homeschool her all the way through. Um, like I mentioned, she went up until her her first semester of senior year when I decided to pull my son and homeschool him uh, she was going to be entering her senior year and that was also just like coincidentally around the time that COVID was kicking off and the schools were shutting down so I was I offered to homeschool her from the start and I said hey do you want me to pull you and just homeschool you your last year and she was like no no I want my senior year at high school and I was like okay that's that's fine but I don't think that it's going to look like what you expect it to look like just because of you know what's going on and so she ended up starting her senior year at school but they were doing remote learning and uh, it was such a mess she was on the computer all day and then I was constantly getting emails saying your child is failing these classes and I would go and talk to her and I'm like why are you failing the classes do you need help in something like what's going on here and because she's not she was a a b student so it was weird to just get those emails and so she would talk to her professors or her teachers and they would say like oh no like you're not failing your grades just haven't been put in yet and I'm like well if the grades haven't been put in yet why am I getting these emails saying that she's failing? <laughs> and so it just kept happening. And um, it was getting to a point where it was just so stressful for her to constantly have, you know, like that limbo period of, am I failing or am I passing? What is going on? And um, it turns out that she was passing all of her classes. And indeed, <laughs> they just did not put in the grades um, in a timely manner. And so around November, December, she was just so over it. And she was like, can you please pull me out and homeschool me for the remaining end part of the year? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so um, at that point, whatever like remaining credits she would have taken through her high school, I wanted to make sure that she had just because I didn't, I was still brand new to high homeschooling and I didn't want to mess with uh, her being able to apply at colleges and things like that. So at that point, she only, looking at her transcripts, she had only needed like three or four classes. And so we purchased the curriculum for her and then she knocked it out. I, I want to say she, she started at the beginning or mid January and by like mid to end of February she was done so she graduated early um she passed all of her classes <laughs> she didn't have any stress of waiting for her teachers to put grades in and um it was such a blessing and and I now I get to say like oh I've homeschooled all of my kids and I get to hopefully graduate all of them through homeschooling so I wish that I could have given you better advice on like what we did for middle school and high school as homeschoolers but coming at it from the public school mom side 
I, I so wish that I, I would have been guided to homeschooling so much sooner, um, just so she could have that time at home to really truly know who she is before the world starts telling her who she is, before she starts being influenced by peers and just all of, being exposed to all of the things that I don't feel like kids should be exposed to and yet in public school they completely are. Um, she's a great kid though. She's super smart and just has a heart of gold and I'm so very proud of her. So the next question is, my question to you is about your new home. How are y'all enjoying the state and how easy was it to find a good church, co-op, and homeschool groups? I want to move out of state in the near future so any advice would be great. So the minute we knew like, hey, yeah, we're going to move. Um, this was already a state that we have lived in previously, just not the same area. So I wasn't familiar with any groups or churches or things like that. I just knew the homeschool laws. And that's always the first thing I look at is the homeschool laws because I want to know, you know, like, am I going to be required to test? Am I going to be required to meet a certain amount of days or hours? Am I going to have to have a portfolio? Like all of these important check marks that you have to do as a homeschool mom, right? So um, I would say look at the homeschool laws first and then join all, if you're on Facebook, join all of the local Facebook groups. I joined all of the homeschool groups that I could find and then I started asking people like, hey, like this is the type of co-op I want and are there are there certain areas that are better to live in that would be closer to these types of co-ops? And so that was really important to me to live in an area that is easily accessible to homeschool groups and co-ops and things like that. And so we have been so blessed. It seems like this area is very thriving for homeschoolers. Uh, we have so many different options. Uh, it's it, it feels like it's going to be a good fit. A lot of them have taken a break for the summer, uh, except for like some of like the meetup co-ops. But even like like the socializing co-ops or, you know, get together, meet up groups for homeschoolers. Uh, it, there's like th at least three that I can think of off the top of my head that are local. Um, we've been so busy with unpacking, I haven't gotten a chance to go and meet any of them, but I'm hoping that they're really good and really welcoming. One of them did post like, hey, when we have new members, make sure that you're welcoming them and talking to them. And, and that made my introverted heart kind of happy, like... <laughs> You know, it sucks being the new person. I, I love moving. It's been so much a huge part of our life as a military family. But I also always very much dislike being the new person and having to put yourself out there again and having to find like your, your tribe or your people or your friendship, your community. And I feel like you always find the best friends the last year you're going to live there. <laughs> and it's so challenging. Um, so it's going to be really different living somewhere just like for forever if we want <laughs> that we don't have to move. Um, but it can be, it can be challenging. And, um, as far as the church, we, so <laughs> we haven't been yet. And that's like, so such a struggle because we're in just a crazy season of life where I feel like being in a church family would be so helpful and so uplifting. We do have one that we want to check out. We're going to check them out this weekend, actually. When we arrived, um, my husband drove my car, we shipped his, and then I flew with four of the kids. And so just to try to make it like easier on the baby because she doesn't like long car rides. So we figured like, okay, well I should just fly with her. And then it turned into me flying with her and my toddler. And then it turned into me flying with everyone. <laughs> and it went surprisingly well. But the, uh, a few days after arriving, I got really sick and but it only lasted for about like 24 hours um and I just needed a really good nap it seemed like and some a lot of vitamin c and then I was good to go but ever since that first week my my baby and my seven-year-old have had a really bad cough so I didn't want to show up to this like brand new church that we're like we're really excited about and you know just have the kids coughing all over the place and then it's like oh well now we're those like icky new people who are like bringing germs and Jesus <laughs> So um, I'm really excited to try that church. I'm hoping it's going to be a really great fit. Uh, I have I do not have any other churches like on backup to try, but 
you know, same thing. I, I join Facebook groups. I ask specifically. I try to be very specific in any questions that I ask in groups because it seems like people don't always read. <laughs> but I would say go and join local groups and see you know, what people recommend the most, I feel like that is very helpful, but also be very specific in what you want. You know, if you want to make sure that the church has a nursery or Saturday services or, you know, a really great Bible study for women or maybe a married Bible study group or, you know, a wanna, things like that, I would just be very specific in what you want in a church and then go and ask in your local groups. One thing that I'm really excited about with this particular church that I want to try out, and that's why one of the reasons why I want to try it out so badly too, is because um, one of the ladies who had recommended it in one of the local groups that I had asked in for homeschooling uh, said that a large part of the church homeschools, and I thought what a blessing that would be to be in a church where so many of the families are like-minded in educational goals and um, purposes so I thought that that could also be just an uplifting place to try so I thought that was really nice um, our last area one of the churches that I was going to for a mops group a large part of their church had homeschooled as well and I kind of always wanted to try that church out but it just never seemed like the right time um, but that I feel like would be such a huge blessing to be in a church where most of the families are homeschooling I, oh, I think I hope that works out all right, so the next one is, how do you manage household duties with school? Do What do priorities look like at your home as far as do you clean up first or do school first or God's word first? Hope that makes sense. Congrats on the 3,000 subscribers. God bless you. Thank you. Um, so this year has been a little crazy because we welcomed the baby, so that obviously threw off our schedule. And then um, my husband has been off work since December because so for those of you who may not know as of June 1st he is officially retired from the military but he had a whole bunch of leave saved up and so it's kind of like you had to either use it or um, kind of get paid for it when you get out I hope that makes sense. And so he decided to use it and then he also got uh, three months of paternity leave when we had the baby. So he's just had like leave upon leave and it's been such a blessing to have him home but that's obviously has thrown another kind of like wrench into like our normal routine. So I'm going to give this answer based on what we were doing before he was home. <laughs> just because that's that's kind of like my my goal and my perfect like you know, what my idea of like a perfect day looks like. So at that point I was trying, I was usually waking up about 6, 6.30 whenever my toddler would wake up and then we would go downstairs. He would play something quietly while I would read the Bible. And then my big kids, we have a rule for them that they don't get to come down until 7.30. That way it gives me a time to just wake up peacefully and calmly and slowly have, you know, my time in the morning before all of like the wants and the needs and just before all of the duties of the day are needed. <laughs> and so when they would come down, then we, I would make them breakfast, we would all eat, and then uh, do a quick pickup from like what, you know, wash whatever breakfast dishes that we had. And then after breakfast is when we do our, um, we start our homeschool day. So I always like to start with our Bible curriculum. I always tell my kids that that's the most important subject to me is that they, they know God's word and they have it in their heart. You know, they can be wonderful at math and language arts and I want them to be good in those things and I want them to care about these things. But to me, God's word is more important than all of the curriculum that we have in our homeschool. Um, so once we would do our Bible curriculum, and it was kind of weird this year because normally we have a Bible curriculum in the previous years that we've done together as a family and we've had, you know, our conversation time and we've dived into God's Word together. This year was kind of different because my 7-year-old used More Than Words Level 1 and my 10-year-old used More Than Words Level 2. Um, I didn't like doing it like that. And I'll talk more about that in a video that's coming up in the next week or two. But um, this year we're going back to fi family by Bible time. But once we did our Bible, then we would either jump into whatever our morning basket stuff was or just our regular curriculum depending on the day and kind of how it was going. And then when my toddler went to take a nap, that's when we would usually do all of our group subjects. And then once homeschool ends for the day, then, you know, at that period, like where homeschool ends, 
and then like a few hours before my husband gets home that's usually around the time where we start picking up the house cleaning and just kind of resetting before i start making dinner i hope that answers your question in the way that um you meant it uh there are some things that i will be changing this year just because uh, i want to get on a better cleaning routine if adding in a fifth baby to our house has taught me anything it's that i need a better cleaning routine and a more like consistent like this is what you do every day but yeah and this is all also like just like what my perfect day looks like and maybe what half to three quarters of the day or you know the times that we do the day look like um sometimes you know it's it's just a chaos train and sometimes my husband comes home and it's a huge mess i remember one time it was like that for maybe like a week or two <laughs> he was like what's going on and like not in like a bad or judgmental way but just like a do, do you need help kind of way and I was like yeah you can either have educated kids or you can have a clean house but you can't have both and he was like well what if I had like you know half educated children <laughs> and a somewhat clean house he was joking don't anybody get too frazzled from that okay but I thought it was hilarious and you know sometimes your day is going to go very smoothly and other days it's just going to be chaotic and you're hanging on by the seat of your pants and you're like we're getting takeout for dinner <laughs> so don't let what my perfect day looks like um make you think that that's how all of our days go it's not and um uh, i'm trying to get better and in a more solid routine just like everybody else okay the last question is do you always finish your curriculum for the year no i do not so our very first year we did because i thought i had to <laughs> and then the second year did we i don't think we finished it i think we were just so done that we didn't finish it and then our third year so last year we did finish it um this year we have finished all of our language arts and um and but we're, we're not going to finish all and we finished all of our bible but we're not going to finish all of our math um at one point when we got into the house my daughter lost her math book so she was working through some of those workbooks that i had showed you guys in one of my um haul videos but she actually just found it and we've been working through both kids math books but it's just getting to that point in the year where i think we're all just a little done we've had so many life changes and we're just kind of i'm just gonna call it <laughs> like i'm gonna have them work until this coming friday and then we're just gonna be done and we're gonna enjoy our summer and we're gonna take time off and not feel bad about that um so sometimes you finish all of your curriculum and sometimes you don't and sometimes you you use your curriculum until you want to have a good stopping point in the summer and then you pick it back up next year i don't think we're going to pick it back up next year because i don't like matthew c <laughs> i know somebody's going to come at me for that but i don't like it and that's okay <laughs> um okay so that is it for the q a all right you guys so as far as the giveaway i'm doing a 20 dollar amazon gift card giveaway uh just as a thank you for supporting this channel and being here every week and hanging out with me and letting me get to know you just as much as you're getting to know me um it's been such a, a blessing to have this channel and to get to know all of you so to enter you just need to like this video hit that red subscribe button and comment down below with what video topics would you like to see coming up over the summertime i'm going to have a lot of curriculum reviews for you guys if there's something specific that you want to see that you haven't already mentioned then let me know down below um, but if there's a certain topic that you want me to cover or a certain question that you have i would love to hear it and that's it so if you want to enter the giveaway don't forget to do those three things and i will see you guys again later i will be announcing the winner this coming sunday so stay tuned to see if you are the lucky winner i'll see you guys again later bye